all the Christmas hats and you're not wearing one. Of all the girls I love before who walked in and out my door. I'm glad you played along. I dedicate this song to all the girls I love before. Uh, not to interrupt this, but The Walking Dead is coming on soon. Oh. to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy. That's me. Where we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog that has well over, get ready for it, 600 recipes now and rising. And today, well, I'm feeling better. I was a little under the weather this week. I'm sure y'all might have seen it with the Man Flu song. I'm feeling better. But I'm not quite through it, and so I figured the best way to get through that was with a great big bowl of hot soup. And it's Christmas season, in case you couldn't tell. So I'm in the Christmas spirit, and I wanted to do a little Christmas soup. I don't know how this relates to Christmas, but it's about that time of year. So I'm sure they celebrate Christmas in Italy. Yes, but this soup is plenty fine any time of year. We have it in the summer, too, but yeah. we're recording this so close to Christmas. Oh my goodness. I wanted to show everybody that was in Christmas spirit. I gotta get this thing off. Because, well, I don't know about you, but it's annoying me. <laughs> Alright. So what we're gonna make today is... And I'm gonna throw a little Italian at you. You ready? Oh my. A zuppa Toscana. <laughs> a Tuscan soup. Actually, if y'all ever been to an Olive Garden, we love Olive Garden. One of the best soups that I ever put in my belly was their Italian soup. Their, Z their zuppa Toscana. And it's filled with taters and onions and sausage and broth and cream. And we're going to toss a little bacon in ours. And then we're going to finish it off with kale. When I say kale, that's that's <laughs> what I want to do. I want to go kale. Well, let me tell you, if you put kale in this recipe, it actually tastes really, really good. That's the only way I really like kale is in a soup. It's crunchy. It adds a little bulk to the soup. It's actually really good. And if you don't like kale, mm -hmm. you could use cabbage instead. Yes. How about spinach? Because they use spinach? Yes. Spinach, cabbage. We're going to use kale. But after I put it in my <laughs> mouth after cooking it, I'm going to go, mmm, kale. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to brown up how much sausage? It's a pound of sausage. A pound of sausage. Now I've got my slow cooker going here and I've all, Chris, rather, has already browned this up. I'll give you the credit. Yeah. Chris well, has already can browned tell, it up. Because it's not pre chewed. Yeah, look at <laughs> chunks. There's chunks in there. <laughs> That's okay. You better not be using that knife with my nonstick coating, or you, buddy, will be in trouble. Hands up. Hands up. Let me grab. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Are you going to join us? No, honey, I did not. You, I just, I was pointing. I was pointing uh, at the chunk. Uh, I will stop. Man, some people and their toys. So anyway, I've got this warming up now. Uh, she had browned this up earlier, and it's all cooked up. I'm going to get that meat heated back up, but either in a skillet or if you have a browning sauteing feature in your slow cooker, you want to brown up a pound of sausage. And then once that gets browned up, according to the blog, it says you want to take out your sausage and then start with your other ingredients. You can leave the sausage in there if you like. Because after this has all been browned up, the next thing you're going to add is your onion. And six slices of bacon. Now, we didn't have any slices of bacon in the house? What? What's wrong with that? I know, that's that's not American. It's not me. <laughs> but what we did have is some real bacon bits. This is just bacon that's been cooked up already and, and chopped crumbled. up. And so you figure you want to add six slices of bacon, and I have no idea how many six slices of bacon is, so I'm going to oh do that right there. Word. Oh, and see this right here? This is not edible, not delicious. Make sure it doesn't go in your soup. But, uh, since, that was not a full one, thankfully. Yeah. Well, unthankfully, because I could just make a bacon soup and be fine. But I'm going to let that brown up, or I'm going to let this 
cook up your onions. Cook, yeah, cook up my onions. Thank you for retuning my head. Um, while you do that, you might want to cut some of those potatoes. Yeah. Now, this thing calls for <laughs> a cup of potatoes. I messed up. And I think Chris read that as a cup full of pounds of potatoes. <laughs> What did I, you add a full bag? I added a full bag. So is it a pound or a pound and a half bag? I think it's, it's a pound, pound and a half. half. Yeah. So we have our finished product today is very potato-y. Yes. And so it's not going to have as much, uh, it's not going to be as much broth as what yours would look like if you actually followed the direction. <laughs> Versus it's okay, me, though. I'm just like randomly throwing things in a slow cooker. So. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. I'm gonna fix it. Are ya? Cause I'm a fixer. Are ya? I'm not gonna use a cup of potatoes in the second batch. Oh, I would mix use them too. what is about maybe a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of potatoes, and then I will when when we get done. When they're both cooked I'll mix up. them all back. I'll mix both batches together. It'll kind of even it out. Still have lots of taters in it, but that's okay because I'm a lots of taters kind of guy. Yeah. So this is all warming up. Woo! Is that an onion? That was an onion. I need to get that off the floor. Remember, if you have pets, don't chop up onions and throw them on the floor. Or you can chop up onions, just get them off the floor. Better yet, don't be clumsy and throw them on the floor in the first place. Do as I say, not as I do. I've touched the floor. I'm going to go touch the water now. <laughs> All right. So the onions are sauteing up with the bacon and the already cooked up sausage. Mm, it smells good. The onions mixed with that sausage and you're starting to smell that bacon. Oh, I need to make a bacon cologne. I would wear it. A bacon perfume, ladies. I'm just telling you, if you're going out on that first date, if you wear a bacon scented perfume. Really? I'm just saying. Uh, uh, You'd have won me over sooner had you been wearing a bacon oh. perfume. Did I have trouble winning you over? Instead of taking a half a day, it would have taken an hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now do I want to go ahead and put the potatoes in now? Uh, or? No, uh, add your broth next. Okay, four we're going to use four cups, which is one package, 32 ounces, of chicken broth. Oh, yeah. And you need to shift that to slow cook. Yep, yep, yep. Stop, slow cook. How long will we cook this for? High for four hours. Oh, there was no sound to it. Oh, you missed it. But that's okay. Yeah. Because while that's starting to warm up, I want to show you what I got for Christmas this year for my Christmas ornament. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. This was not an approved purchase. So, y'all are starting to get to know who we are, know that. I kind of like funny things, and I kind of like, uh, well, fart sounds. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> and I, a friend of mine, George Fields, brother, you know I love you, he pointed me in the direction of the Santa Butt Christmas ornament. The Santa Butt. And that's what it's called. And this this is don't, what it does. Don't fart it over I'm our food. I'll <laughs> just can't, see if you can hear it here. <laughs> George, a segment of my show has been dedicated to you. Let me thank you. you, George. <laughs> really, from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, she's been hearing that a lot Get lately. Get it from the bottom of uh, my heart. <laughs> and when I say she's been hearing a lot lately, I mean from the ornament. <laughs> so, all right. So now we've got the broth okay, put so in this add in there. Garlic and um and your potatoes which how much garlic did you say i think it's a teaspoon and a half i'm not sure that we should trust me without looking on the block considering my potato habit we'll do a teaspoon and a half and this again is dried garments or yeah, yeah freeze dried you garlic you can use regular garlic too just to taste yeah. what what you enjoy and if we add a little bit more like i'm gonna add about two teaspoons because we really like garlic around yeah. here if you'll notice you've never seen a vampire on the show because we use a lot of garlic <laughs> all right so those now are your done. potatoes go in and lid goes on and if you notice like i said pay attention i'm not using a full cup of potatoes here because i'm gonna actually mix these both together later 
and because I messed up. Somebody went over the top. Over the top. That was a good movie. Have you ever seen that movie? Huh? It's like a switch. Really? Nobody? No. Anyone? Oh, come on, Sylvester Stallone. Mm. He was a trucker and he went to arm wrestle for money and win contests. And had to be there, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the taters are now in with the garlic. Give that a stir. Lid goes on, high for four hours. Lid goes on, high for four hours. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go get you a bowl. Oh, oh. oh. That would have been one heck of a bad party foul. because they're all soaked up in the taters. Here's a soup bowl, thank you very much. Now, this is what will look like four hours later. Now, like we were joking about a while ago, notice a lot of that broth is gone. It's because it's soaked up into all those taters. Lots and lots of taters, but that's okay because I'm a tater guy. We're gonna mix the two together. It's all gonna even out and yeah. everything will be fine. All right, let me get that. Probably need to start heating that back up, huh? Yup. Just on high, high on there slow we go. cook. Let me move this out of the way. All right, now what would I need to do here now? Now you just pour in your kale, which is two cups of kale, um, and you just it'll get really nice green and bright. You're gonna stir it um, until it wilts down, and you're gonna. I touched the top of the slow cooker. Uh oh. That was hot. Pour your. Uh, cream in as well. You do that now? Yeah, well, mainly because I really uh, messed up, and you don't have ton, you don't have a lot of broth in there anyway. No, I don't. So this just goes to show you, everybody makes mistakes in the kitchen. Yeah. Now you could use heavy cream. We're using two percent milk, and this is a great way to kind of reduce the fat in yeah. the soup if you want to kind of make this a little lower fat. This is one good way to do it. Yep. It's going to be alright. It's got yeah. plenty of broth in there. So you just heat that through and once that's heated, um, it's ready to eat. Yep. So I'm going to stir this up a little bit and let it get heated through until the kale has wilted a little bit. But again, like I said, if you couldn't tell from my attire, it's getting really close to Christmas and around here we really do get in the Christmas spirit. We decorate the tree, we play some music, we were jamming to some heavy metal music over the weekend, some heavy metal Christmas music, per Miss Ad's request. Just kidding, <laughs> that was me. I'm trying to get her all cultural and stuff with some heavy metal. Along with the Christmas tunes, Mama was up there headbanging while wrapping the garland around the tree, and then Miss Ad decided that while I was sitting there on a stool watching Mama do the garland, that Addie was going to decorate me. <laughs> But we have a lot of fun during the Christmas time, and we like to eat a lot of good food during Christmas, and this is definitely something for the colder months. We have it in the summer, too. Spring, fall, doesn't matter. We really enjoy this soup. But in the winter, when it starts getting real cold, this is a fantastic soup. This is one of my favorite things to eat. But everything started to wilt down now. Nope. Anything else to do but eat it? It's time for you to have a big old bowl. I think I can manage can, can you handle that? Hang on, I'm trying to find some potatoes. <laughs> like we said, yours should have a lot more broth uh, in it than mine yeah. does. Um, I can get some broth out of there. Because I messed good. it. Probably could have used a better spoon for this, but... Frankly, we haven't done the dishes yet today, so it's probably not clean yet. What? My bad. What haven't we done? The dishes. What are you looking for? I was thinking about, I should have got a better spoon. Than that oh, dessert. well, I think the one I was stirring it with is right behind you, yeah, actually. Bigger spoon. Because I've got a bigger mouth. Let's All right. It. Let's give this a test. Okay, big mouth. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> it smells fantastic. The sausage, all the spices in the sausage come out. And I mean, you can see the kale has started to wilt. But it's still got some body to it, which is good because it gives it some crunch to go along with it. I got me some broth, some tater, some kale, and some sausage here. <laughs> I 
that is good. It's one of our favorite. It's one that we make all the time. Mm -hmm. So, which is why I like totally wasn't looking at the recipe and just throwing in stuff. So, <laughs> like the other way that you could have fixed that if you weren't making a whole nother batch is just add more broth, like two cups more yeah. broth to it. And that's probably what I would have done had we not been taping it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. That is so good. <laughs> And again, we made that with milk, so it's not going to be near as creamy mm -mm. as what you might get at All Garden. But theirs isn't really creamy either. Mm -mm. It's really brothy. Yeah, we. I've even made it. I mean, you can make it any That's which so way you want. Um, the spices in that sausage mm -hmm. give it just a little bit of heat. If you like a lot of heat, get a spicy breakfast sausage. I know we use mild, but there's still enough spice in that. It kind of gives a little bite on the back end. Nothing, nothing that's going to burn your face off or anything like that. Just it gives a nice warmth to it. Again, a great winter soup. Um, the kale is still really crunchy, um, but when you mix it with those potatoes and that broth and that heat from that sausage, it is just so good. It warmed me up from here all the way down to my belly. Super, super good. Very simple to put together. Four hours and you've got dinner ready. And there's enough there for dinner. We're going to mix it together. And I'm probably going to take a lot of it for my coworker, uh, a lot of it in for my coworkers tomorrow. Um, and I know they're going to enjoy it as well. But again, we want to thank you for watching another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. If you like what you saw and you're not a member yet of the Croc Posse, then down below there's a little button that says subscribe. Click it one time. You're a member of the family. That is the Croc Posse. And check us out here on Cooking Chris's Dishes, as well as the other cool things we do, like our episodes of As Good As It Gets, our Church Song Sundays, and all the other things we put up here from the family. You all keep watching, and we'll keep cooking, and all will be well. Thanks again.